everybody, and welcome back to the Sandy Springs Christian Conversations podcast and YouTube channel. Um, I'm excited to be back uh, for our third episode. Um, this is Casey Evans, member of Sandy Springs Christian Church, uh, and I'm joined today uh, by Nathan Brown and Janet Howell. Uh, Nathan, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. Good to be back. Uh, good to be with you, Casey and Janet, today. Um, I'm Nathan Brown, Senior Minister at Sandy Springs Christian Church. Uh, this is, believe it or not, um, January was three years anniversary. So been at the church three years um, and um, and we're into a podcast number three. Who would have known we'd be doing a podcast? Uh, <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Three is, three is a great number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we and, have uh, three people on the call. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, absolutely. It's like the Trinity here. We're, 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 we're moving <laughs> right along. Uh, All right. No, I'm glad to have Janet today with us. Um, and uh, Janet Howell is a member of Sandy Springs Christian Church and uh, the leader of our visioning team um, uh, throughout this process. So we'll turn it over to Janet. You can introduce yourself more formally. Thanks. I'm, I am Janet Howell. And um, sticking with the threes, three years ago, I um, w walked into the doors of Sandy Springs Christian Church and really fell in love with the community and the people. And three weeks later, uh, Reverend uh, Nathan came on the scene with his family. And um, that was the icing on the cake. And um, I've been very, very blessed to be able to get very involved and in being a part of the uh, visioning team. Very good. Well, thank you. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to continue this on by uh, mentioning our mission statement, as we've done in previous podcasts. Um, this podcast is a hope filled effort by and for the people of Sandy Springs Christian Church as a way to connect to and communicate with both people in our congregation and the greater Sandy Springs, Atlanta, Georgia community with a positive conversation about our community and its relationship to God. And to introduce today's topic for episode three, um, surprise, surprise, we are going to talk about vision, um, which is uh, something that I kind of uh, was inspired to talk about um, because of a recent reading within my um Bible uh, year-long 365-day uh, plan. Uh, they, towards the end of uh, Exodus, I happened to be just reading, and it was kind of right in the midst of some pretty, I, I hate to say it, dull chapters of the Bible. Um, it was very much going into the detail of like the intricacies of building the Ark of the Covenant and building the tabernacle and things of that nature. And, you know, it was just kind of hard to read every little bit in, uh, of it. But Exodus 36, 1 through 7 stood out to me because I felt uh, a little bit moved by the fact that, um, you know, it was mentioning how the Israelites had brought so much to the temple, uh, the tabernacle builders, um, and they had offered them so much stuff that the people that were actually in charge of building the, the temple or the tabernacle uh, went to Moses and said, Moses, please tell people to stop bringing stuff. <laughs> we have more than what we can use. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, our church is very blessed um, with the with the um, assets and the giving and the situation that we're in, but I can't fathom us ever going to church and uh, being like, "Hey, everybody, can you please stop giving to us this week?" Uh, I just can't envision that. Um, and so, uh, you know, I just was kind of inspired by the fact that I thought it was wonderful to hear that the people, these Israelites, um, that had spent all of their lives in captivity um, and then through the wilderness and th to hear that they were so excited about um, these projects that the, um, that the early church was um, involved with. And, you know, so it kind of got me thinking about like, what are the ambitions and the, uh, the vision of our church and the future of our church that can get people uh, excited? And, and it kind of made me think, wait a minute, we just went through a pretty 
robust visioning process and are still in the midst of it. Uh, so maybe I'm just playing catch up here to where where we are. But maybe Nathan, uh, you know, this would be awesome for you to maybe tell us a little bit about how you came to this realization. You know, being at our church only for three years. Yeah. Well, what's what's I'm I'm so glad you actually came up with the idea. Um, you know, it was. It, <sighs> Obviously, 2020 was hard in so many different reasons, uh, so many different ways for all of us um, and for the church in particular. But, um, you know, for specifically Sandy Springs Christian Church, what was hard was that we had just spent a year uh, in this visioning process had pulled together uh, a new a new mission statement, a new vision statement, um, had become and, and officially become open and affirming, and had had approved this kind of visioning plan, um, and we did that in December of nineteen, mm-hmm. and literally February of twenty, the flood happens. March, the pandemic happens. Great flood, <laughs> and, the second plague. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is this is Genesis all over again, just reincarnated. And you know, and, and you know, I, it it really was disheartening because there was this, you know, we, we were experiencing growth. There was this excitement about the vision, and um, and anytime you 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 talk about vision in a church and mission, you know, it's one thing to. Uh, to, to sort of um, capture it on paper, it's another for it to uh, be written on your hearts, right? And 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 it takes time for that to happen. And the trajectory was we were headed there, and then all of a sudden, this this all these circumstances unfold, and we go, we become disconnected from it, and it becomes the last thing on our to do list because we're reacting to every other challenge that's in front of us because of all the circumstances in the world. So I'm really grateful, Casey, for you to even come up with the idea. This is, as we've said, our theme for this year is to reconnect. And so it's really important. We spent time at our leadership retreat um, a couple of weeks ago, reconnecting to our visioning plan, literally. Uh, And Janet's going to talk a little bit about kind of some of those reconnecting all of us to that uh, in some of the work we've done. But you know, I guess I think about vision. Um, there are a couple of different ways you could think about vision in the church. Um, one is that uh, vision looks more like it does uh, in the Old Testament, or or even to some degree in the New Testament, um, where God sort of speaks to one person, right? So, to your point with Moses, mm-hmm. you know, God God is has this co- these ongoing conversations with Moses. He comes Moses, down in a in a cloud or a pillar of some sort. It, it's of very burning linear. Bush. <laughs> it's very linear. It's very um, you know vertical, and and then and then Moses disseminates that to the people, right? And the people live that out. Okay. There is the another side of a vision that's more, I think, disciple. It, it comes from more of our tradition, being a congregational tradition. Um, and I think it 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 grows out of as the church becomes and forms as the, you know as the um, as the apostles take the message from Jesus, uh, and they begin to form the church. I think vision starts to get lived out a little bit more like this, and that is that uh, it's kind of like what you said, Casey, that that God has given every community of faith all it needs to do the work that God has called it to do, and it's a matter of those that group of people spending time and discernment and prayer and reflection on what specifically it is that God is calling us to do given those resources those gifts those the time the energy the talent that you, that that a congregation has you know what are the needs in, in outside of our doors and how can our gifts meet those needs right and 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 my personal feeling is that that I have not had the experience yet where God has come to me personally and given me a, a vision to tell the church. My experience is that that vision best comes from the community and from sort of um, a, 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 a concerted effort uh, collaboratively, right? So, so that is the way that I went about leading our congregation, and and that's the way I've led previous congregations through visioning is is to go to the people and and spend time together in prayer and reflection and discernment about what God is calling us to do. Yep. So, 
go ahead. I was I was just going to say I think that your first sign from God is going to come in the form of a hole in one one day. Um, <laughs> that's when you're going to have that moment. Uh, just be ready for it. <laughs> it's going to happen. Uh, Casey, God must not want to talk to me at all because I've been playing golf since I was eight years old. I've never had a hole in one. And I've also discovered during that time that if there's one thing that God does not like, there's one thing that, that your prayer life has no influence on, it's your golf game. So, uh, <laughs> well, well, back to the first two episodes, they'll have hope patience and have patience. And hope, it's, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, um, so when I got to Sandy Springs Christian Church three years ago, you know, one of the first things you do as a pastor, especially in your first year, is you really just, you have fresh eyes on everything because once you've been there for a year or two or three years, the, the things that you notice at, at, at a first impression sort of basis, they begin to become the norm, right? And you see them all the time and they kind of disappear. And so one of the things I really try to be intentional about anytime I, I start with a congregation is to take notes and mental notes and, and literal notes about what you see, you know, when you first come into a place. And one of the things I noticed uh, almost immediately was the number of mission statements that were kind of hanging around the church in different places. Um, if you remember when you go, it's been so long, so many of you have been in the building, but if you remember when you go into the, the centrum area, the gathering space, on the wall above the stairwell, you know, uh, as you go down to the day school, is a you, you may have gotten so used to it that you don't notice it anymore, but there is, in fact, a huge mission statement emblazoned on the wall there. It's on a print, I think, there. That was That was not the current mission statement of the church when I arrived. So we had a uh, an older mission statement on the wall, a, a newer mission statement that was on some of our stationery that we used. And then when you went into the workroom, you found other stationery that had other, another mission statement and kind of logo and branding on it. Um, and, and so it, it, it was kind of clear to me, you also had in our newsletter, uh, different words associated with different mission statements. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was just kind of, um, you know, it was just, there were, there were just several iterations of this. And it was obvious the church had been through several processes uh, over a period of time. And, you know, that, that perhaps when we talk about putting on paper versus written on the hearts, that perhaps a mission statement or a kind of vision had not yet been written on the hearts of the people. At least there was, when I, when we first started having conversation uh, during the visioning process, I asked people, to recite the mission statement, you know, and mm -hmm. I got varying degrees of varying versions of the mission statement, you know, and, and that was, it's nobody's fault. It just, it just happens over time, especially when there's transition in churches and that kind of thing. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, our church has been around for 50 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, that's a, that's a long time. And I, I let's also not forget that life changes in 50 years, you know, Absolutely. what's important to a church in the first 10 years is not what's important in the, you know, 50th year. Um, so it, it makes sense that that happened. But at the same time, maybe if I'm putting words in your mouth here a little bit, but saying, you know, maybe we just needed a modern version of yeah. what we had already, uh, we didn't push out all of the other, we haven't taken any of those words down, we haven't mm -hmm. gotten rid of it. But we've kind of tried to become a little bit more focused on where we're going in the future um, as opposed to just being scattered um, That's right. and putting all of our collective efforts towards it, um, which is what hopefully the visioning plan resulted in, right? Or well, least... that's right. And, and the other thing is my personal feeling is that it's always better to do a visioning process with your pastor than to, you know, a lot of times, a visioning plan will be put together before a pastor arrives. Well, when that pastor gets there, they may or not, that may or may not be the the particular gifts, passions of that pastor to work alongside that congregation and trying to move. So, you know, it was it was a natural time too with a new minister to kind of think about what this ministry is going to look like, you know, over the next three to five years um, as we work together. And so, uh, you know, that made perfect sense as well to do. So. As a result of that, um, 
we began to have conversation about, um, you know, how to go about this, this visioning process, having done it in, in a couple of other congregations, my experience was that, um, when you ask the pastor to lead the visioning process, all of it, it ends up consuming all of their time and the other things that you really called the pastor there to do, you know, don't get done as well or to the degree you'd like them to because so much time is being put into the visioning plan or the visioning process. And so um, what I talked to leadership about was to actually have some consultants come and and um, help us with that visioning process. And of course, ministry architects did. Um, and uh, they helped guide us through, you know, that kind of year long process of both helping us vision and then also coaching us on implementation, um, you know, for the first six months anyway, of as we start to live out our visioning plan. So uh, that's kind of the introduction of you know how I think about vision, uh, why we did it the way we did it, um, and then, you know, where we kind of bringing us up to speed on where we are today as we're beginning to start to live it out. So. Okay. Well, and there's one other thing that I want to also make uh, a point about is when I also read these uh, chapters of Exodus talking about the the building of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant, I mentioned earlier that, you know, quite frankly, I thought they were boring. Um, but what I meant by that was they 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 go into a, an, a, an ornate detail of everything that they did. Um, how many curtains, the colors, every little nit, nitpicky thing. The one the one thing that that really also struck me about that is how much time and care that went into it and the thought that went into it and how beautiful it actually must have ultimately been. Um, and that it wasn't just a, a, it, the, the other, the other part of it was all the, that discussion of like what the tabernacle and the Ark of the covenant were going to look like happened before they actually built it, which is great. You know, they didn't just kind of do it <laughs> and like make it, make it. And then like, just so, you know, they started counting things and looking at everything they built, they actually planned it out. Um, which I think is, is kind of a similar process of our, our visioning process, if you will, we're planning it out. We're building the foundation of, you know, meeting with the congregation in 2019, creating the plan. And, and now we're in the, you know, implementation phase. And even though 2020 was a little bit, um, you know, difficult for us. And it didn't, it wasn't our sole focus. Cause I think that especially for you, Nathan, just sometimes some weeks we're just like, are we going to have a service? <laughs> and, <laughs> and thank goodness you got it together every week. Yeah. Um, but, but Janet, I think has a lot of insight into, um, you know, where we've, where we've come from uh, since December, 2019. So Janet, I'd love for you to, to, to take the reins here for a bit and I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> and, and please jump in at any point. But, you know, it's interesting listening to both of you and, and how important um, the gift of time and talents of our entire congregation um, brings everything together and makes things happen. And even looking at the visioning process thus far, if I look back to 2019, we had ministry architects guiding us for the first six months. We had a phenomenal group of people um, who, who served on the visioning team for 12 full months. It took the entire congregation's input for us to actually create and get it, gain approval of our vision, mission, and core values. And all that helped to further clarify our church's identity. And then next in 2019, as a congregation, we adopted an open and affirming statement and officially included it in our bylaws and constitution, which was really huge. And you look at the people that were involved in making that happen. Really, it was every single member played some sort of a role between uh, participating in um, you know, small groups or large groups and defining things that were important to us. So uh, that was a very, very exciting year. Um, but, you know, Nathan reminds us of how difficult 2020 was between the flood and COVID 
And yet it's fascinating to me, again, thanks to all the people in the church, um, the decision was made in January 2020 that the leadership council would take over the lead role um, of the visioning team. And, um, and that was the plan all along because we needed, we just asked the people from the visioning team to com commit to just a, a year in 2019. Um, so it's, it's just remarkable to me that people stepped in and a tremendous, a, lot, a tremendous amount of things actually were achieved in 2020, despite the COVID crisis. Um, and as I talk through this, I start thinking about all of the people that played a role in helping us to achieve our milestones in 2020. For example, uh, Kendra and Jenna conducted an audit of current outreach programs. Uh, Kimbrell did a phenomenal assessment of our birth to death education program which defined specific areas of need for us to work in on in 2021. And when you say uh, birth to death education programs, can you describe that? Is that like from Sunday school to, you know, childcare, everything? It is. And it's real, literally from birth to death. Okay. Because you have, you know, there's a really a curriculum doesn't start until I believe um, like four or five years old. But you think about uh, going to church and all the things you learn during your elementary school years, your junior, your high school, it's unbelievable. Uh, for example, if you look at the high school group, uh, Brian and Katie have done such an amazing job in 2020 that that group of kids um, just keeps growing. And Nathan mentioned that when he, he drops Harrison off, even now, there's kids that don't necessarily belong to our church, but have gotten really engaged in that program. And then in addition to that, we have all sorts of adult Sunday school class. If you look at Jenna's class, it's, it, you know, attracts people in your age group. Um, and um, I know you and Brandy have gotten very involved in that. Mm -hmm. But it also, there's an, an older group for me that kind of attracts the older people that's, um, you know, many people take part in leading that. And then there's all these other options and there's Friday men's group. And I, they used to meet on Friday morning, I think at 7 a.m. And I think that might have ceased, but are you all doing um, Zoom calls around that now? Nathan can talk about I, that a little bit. I don't know if the men's group, I don't think they have been meeting as regularly. Um, they may have had some Zoom check-ins, but um, most of our programs, I mean, most of the ongoing, you know, small group stuff, you know, has met sporadically here and there, but not, not regularly. Um, those are some of the things we're trying to get back going again this, this year. So, yeah. That's, that's the reconnect stuff. And that's the reconnect stuff that we're doing yeah. in 2021. And we are working on a plan on that as we discussed in the leadership council, but you know, I look at Art Edwards who kind of really leads this uh, Sunday school group for the older generation. He sends an amazing newsletter every um, Saturday afternoon, and I learned so much from it. So all of these things. He started including me on that too recently, and I'm very thankful because it really is very, very well thought out. Um, it should almost go to everybody. I feel like <laughs> you know, it's so insightful. So you know, if you if anybody out there is interested, you get in touch with Amy at uh, Sandy Springs Christian Church off of our website. And um, I'm sure that we can get you on that newsletter list. Um, and that just as a reminder to everybody, I believe that the uh, URL for that is sandyspringscc.org. Is that right, Nathan? Yeah, yeah. website's uh, www.sandyspringscc.org. That's it. Yeah. So just uh, find our uh, telephone number and Amy will help you get on that incredible list. Um, and our, um, 
Art Edwards uh, fan club will just grow and grow. Absolutely. Um, so I'd like to take a couple minutes to talk a little bit about uh, the, keep moving on the 2020 unless um, yeah. you have any questions. Yeah, no, I, I think um, uh, I, I think that one of the things that um, one of the other reasons for the visioning process, and I think as, as you start to go through kind of what we're working on, um, when I when I went to our first leadership retreat and kind of led the the leadership retreat that first year, the three things that came up that leadership felt like or those present felt like ought to be the three priorities for the church. Two of them were more about identity than they were like tactical, technical things, right? Um, one was uh, becoming an open and affirming church. One was um, building our relationship with the day school. Um, and one was a lot to do with communications and marketing, and that kind of thing. And when, when I looked at all that, it became clear to me that it, it needed to be a, a plan that helped us over time shape the identity of the church rather than having a series of boxes we checked to do sort of these technical things that, you know, were, it's one thing to talk about starting a program or, or doing more marketing, you know, yes, we can do those things and those are important things, but you know, what programs we do and what we're saying in our marketing has everything to do with understanding who we are and what makes Sandy Springs Christian church unique. And so, you know, what's our, what to go back to the beginning of Casey's point about, we have all that we have, that we need to do God's work. Well, what are those specific gifts that Sandy Springs Christian Church offers to the world? How can we hone those, focus those, so that you know our particular niche of God's work is being worked out and lived out through the life of our congregation? So as you listen to Janet's kind of overarching, you know, the goals and the and the, the stuff we've accomplished in those, a lot of it is is about process over time. It's not just about checking these boxes off, but rather the, all of these things are moving us toward embracing the greater identity that we've articulated in our vision, our mission statements and our values. So. Yeah, they didn't build Rome in a day. They didn't build the tabernacle in a day either. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned, of course, uh, communication and marketing. Um, but we have had used a software system for our church for many, many years. And it really never allowed um, our members to change their profile if they've moved, their, you know, update their address so that people can keep in touch. We were all dependent on a directory that came out once a year. And um, so basically one of the things that Kathy Owen and I uh, worked on a lot uh, in 2019 and 2020 was first of all, trying to find a new software system that could enable us to get all of our members to have easy access to other members' contact information. We ultimately want to be able to attach a tagline to people who are, for example, enjoy doing yard work, enjoy cooking in the kitchen, enjoy delivering food, so that the leaders of these you know, individual volunteer opportunities will be able to just go to this new software system ultimately and say, oh, you know, these are the people that have expressed an interest in these areas where we really need help. Um, Sounds like a little bit, kind of like a little uh, mini social network. It's exactly what it is. Oh, cool. And so really, I mean, my vision for this is that we'll have this software system for all of our members to get all their information. And then we're going to get a new website ultimately for all of those people out in the world that want to learn more about Sandy Springs Christian Church. And so the cool thing is in the next week or so, we'll be sending the first email out to our members about the new Breeze software. We're taking baby steps with this, particularly because we don't have a whole lot of volunteer opportunities except to work on visioning right now. Um, but 
this, we're gonna ask everyone to check their profile, check out the picture that we have, and um, we're just gonna take the baby steps. So, you know, stay tuned. You'll be hearing about, uh, you'll be getting an email about that as a member soon. And then we'll be doing updates along the way. So that's an important part of visioning from a marketing and communication standpoint. Um, you also mentioned the day school as, um, as part the, of the visioning. We had a day school task force and they have made great strides. And most everybody knows that we have a new day school advisory council that works very closely with the day school. And the chair of that is our own Caroline and who grew up um, in Sandy Springs Christian Church. And then also Laura serves as the chair elect. And so that relationship has really blossomed um, in 2020, and we're and, making amazing progress. And and correct if I'm wrong here, but I bet you had this process not been started and our task force, you know, not gotten going. I know that you know the day school as a daycare, you know, entity with pre-K, um, you know, that industry in 2020 was just completely turned on its head. Um, mm -hmm. So the extra attention that you know, we placed upon that with, you know, people within our church probably couldn't have been better timing for them um, in one of their toughest years that they've ever had. So. Well, and let's remember that they dealt not only with COVID, but then the flood deeply impacted yeah. the business. So to your point, it has been perfect timing um, for them to get the help that they're getting from our uh, task force and from this new uh, council. And by the way, this uh, we'll just send this out as a public service uh, announcement here is if you have any interest in putting your kids into the day school, please reach out to us. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a great place. Uh, you don't have to be a member of our church. Uh, you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be anything but a parent of a child uh, between the ages of what, two to five? Yeah. Uh, and you qualify. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, the amazing thing about Kathy and her staff is these teachers have been with the day school for years. And so it's a very, very consistent uh, team of people that really care very deeply for the children and offer an amazing place for, for them to spend their days. Yeah. So uh, the last thing I really, I, I am so amazed at this particular effort. And that was um, when we first were on the visioning team, we realized that one of our goals really, it was a goal to be able to offer everything that we have at St. Uh, Sandy Springs Christian Church virtually. And I remember the first time we talked about this, I would scratch my head like, how in the world are we ever going to get this? And Again, the amazing thing is that there is nothing like necessity for the mother of invention. And thanks to uh, Pastor Nathan, he so bravely, when the flood came, just said, you know what, I'm going to broadcast a church um, session. Um, I'm going to preach to my great con uh, congregation. I'm going to have... Um, communion and I'm going to do all of this sitting by myself in the living room and you know I laugh because the first time first couple of times he did it he said you know I push that little button and I'm thinking I hope someone can hear me I hope someone can see me but it didn't make him stall because he wasn't getting any sort of feedback um, and from there it just grew and grew and just, you can't even mention all the people. You look at our president, John, he was like, absolutely, we will find a way to pay for new cameras. Look at Leslie, who's never worked with cameras. And I don't think she's done all that much work with PCs, but here she was managing not one, but three different cameras. You had Jane and uh, Jay, Jay, and Bruce both stepping in and doing wiring. And we had people come in and set up all the cameras and all the equipment. 
And Leslie has just single-handedly run this um, while, of course, she's had help um, with Susan on the audio of all of this. But it's really remarkable that in such a short period of time, these this very small group of people have come together and we have the luxury of um, online church services. We can do in person with, we limit the number of people, but this for now, is- For now, What's that? For now. <laughs> for now. But, you know, COVID is coming, COVID vaccination is coming for a lot, everybody soon. Yep. And the reality is, is that we can offer, we will always offer online services. And that is something that we only dreamed of, but yet it happened in 2021. Yep. Yeah, I think before it was all, it was recorded, but it was one single like camcorder that, you know, then got posted to YouTube before and it didn't happen in a live stream format, which, you know, taking it from a single camcorder to a live stream format that, you know, there's a whole lot of different moving parts, you know, that you have to produce all together. And and I'm going to say, I thought all of this happened last year, just by magic, like pure miracles, just, you know, I didn't realize that all these people are involved. No, I, I'm kidding, <laughs> but it really, no, you're right. It was a miracle every week that it happened because <laughs> we were all just figuring it out as we went. I mean, I, to Janet's point about, you know, how things happen. I mean, when you're forced to do something, it's amazing how quickly, you know, you, you just force yourself to learn how to do it. And so, you know, we had this, this part of our visioning plan is to kind of communicate to the world, you know, who Sandy Springs Christian Church is and do that all these different ways, one of which was to live stream. And we had this goal of maybe doing that in a year or two. And all of a sudden, I mean, we went from overnight, I was live streaming in my living room to a few months later, or to, to a few weeks later, we began recording worship and had different people recording different aspects of worship in their different homes. And we actually used that as an opportunity to ask people who lived in other parts of the world who were connected to our church to do different parts of worship so that we could see those folks, they could be in worship with us in a way that they wouldn't otherwise have been able to, then to live streaming it on Sunday mornings and you know, being able to actually have people present for the actual worship service virtually, but then also to have that recorded version later for people to access as well. I mean, that journey um, is for a church our size with the, with the you know, volunteer base, the resources we have, it is unbelievable how that has gone, how well that has gone, and the time, hours, resources, gifts people have put into that. I mean, it, it's our people are incredible. They just mm-hmm. really are. And so just to give you an example of, of things that went on behind the scenes, a funny story. So last year, um, it's, it's Easter Sunday, right? So, of course, if you remember at this time, we're all thinking – you know, maybe we might be able to eat meat in person for Easter because, mm-hmm. you know, there's always this, this, there's, there was this the time like, oh, just a couple more weeks. Oh, just a couple more weeks. Right. Yep. And so we had this. So, you know, a, f- a couple weeks, two or three weeks before Easter, it was clear, look, there's a good chance we're probably not going to be able to, we need to figure something out. And Susan really wanted to do some things musically that we had not been able to do yet with doing the way we had been doing worship. Um, and so she really wanted to record some things and make sure they were done well so they could be. So this was the this was going to be the first recorded version, I think, of worship we were going to do. And and it was it was awesome. Like it was amazing. She put it all together. You know, everything was fantastic. Well, I'm about 10 o'clock the night before Easter morning. Of course, I, I know everything's recorded and done. So I'm going to spend Easter morning with my family watching worship on TV, right? I mean, that's my expectation. <laughs> so, so I'm about 10 o'clock that night, I get this note from Susan. And, and at the time she was, she was the one kind of putting things together. And uh, she said, uh, she texts me, she says, Hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to upload this to, to YouTube, but it's taken a while. I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's nighttime. It, it will be all right. So 
the next morning, um, about 30 minutes before it's supposed to go live, I get another text and, and Susan says, I, I don't know what's going on. It's just not, it's not uploading fast enough. And I'm like, okay, well, it takes quite a bit of time for an hour long video to upload to YouTube. But you know, that was a, that was a long, she said she was having issues all night with it. She'd been up all night, literally working on it, trying to get it to work. <laughs> wow! And so all of a sudden it's 15 minutes before it's supposed to be uploaded. And I said, Susan, just continue to work on it, but it's not going to be up in time. I got to make this happen. So I literally get out of my pajamas. I go upstairs. I put on my, my, my suit, my coat and tie or my shirt and tie, come back downstairs. I'm texting Teresa to get her prayer. So I, cause I had been like having people do different aspects and I was able to share their voices and worship. So I'm like, Teresa, send me your pastoral prayer. Brian, send me your community meditation. Like I'm getting all this stuff. And literally the minute I pressed boom live stream, I had everything in front of me and I was like, good morning, happy Easter. And we did live stream from my, from my, um, from my living room, just like that. And, and then, and then that afternoon, God bless her. I mean, Susan was up literally all night doing this. God bless her. She got it up. And in the afternoon, if you may, you may not remember, but an Eve blast went out and said, Hey, the Easter service we'd planned is now up, you know, go take a look at it. And of course it was there that afternoon, but that's, that's one example of many of the kinds of things that went on behind the scenes that, and it was a learning experience because we learned how to upload to YouTube and it went much smoother the next time we did it, you know, but it took having some, some glitches along the way to figure out how to do all this. So that's too funny. And and I, I think that I, I remember listening to the live stream version of it. And then I saw the, I do remember that email that came out later, but I didn't watch the, the actual video. I mean, was there a, a remarkable difference or, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Huge. Huge. Okay. I mean, it was, okay. it was completely different because it was all, I mean, what you saw on Sunday morning was me literally live streaming, just me. The okay. afternoon version was all of these people who recorded musical selections. We'd had uh, different people do the pastor. I had recorded the sermon. I mean, it was all, it was all different. Was I'm going to have to go back and watch Easter. Oh again. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you definitely need to. It's a great, like uh, listening to a good Easter service again, though. It's a, know? It's a great service. Yeah. It was fantastic. So yeah. it just didn't get up quite in time that we'd planned. So those are the kinds of things that, I mean, I, there are so many examples of that kind of thing that happened behind the scenes and you just, you learn as you go. And that's part of it. You just, you experiment <laughs> with something, you try it, it doesn't work. And, you know, and, and going back to vision now, I mean, so what we've talked about, you know, Janet's kind of outlined some things we've accomplished in the last year, but like, one of the things we also said at the visioning leader or at the leadership retreat about our visioning plan is look, there's been a lot that's changed in the last year. We, we approved this plan in 19, 2020 happened. And now all of a sudden things are exponentially different, at least for now within the life of the church and will be going forward. We hope to get back to some kind of normalcy, but it will definitely inevitably be different. And so it may be that as we live into this plan, that we need to tweak it and we need to pivot and go a different direction. And we may say about something, look, this was relevant in 2019. It's just not now in 2021, or it's, or it's not as big a priority as we had you know, thought it should be in 2019. And, and we were talking about this before the podcast. I mean, Casey said, you know, the thing about vision too is, is that it's, it, it evolves, right? It I mean, evolves, it's, it's it not, adapts, it grows. It's not static. Know. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so as, while we have these plans and we're making progress on them uh, and, and we'll continue to, and, and hope to, we also know that we'll need to uh, adapt to them, add to them, tweak them along the way. Uh, and at a certain point, um, reimagine another, you know, vision or an ongoing part of the vision so correct correct if i'm wrong but i don't believe that uh having a podcast was part of the visioning plan so uh we've already adapted <laughs> to a degree didn't even know we needed it actually, or did we oh actually uh we now it's not the podcast but we still want to do this one of our dreams was to be able to have like five or six minute conversations that we could um you know just little messages um, that we could record, that people could 
tell their friends about and say, you know, we just have some great things going on at St. Springs Christian Church. Take five minutes and look at this. So okay. that may evolve from, you know, we may be doing, maybe looking to you, Casey, you're doing such a great job to do <laughs> mini podcasts. So we may be calling on you to do that. But I can see that working a hundred percent. I know. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just like little mini elevator talks, you know, kind of uh, things. But Especially since we don't plan on, you know, putting this long, vor- long form version of this podcast out every week, you know, as much as right. we'd like to, we know life happens, but, you know, maybe having one of those interspersed, uh, you know, in, in, in the off weeks uh, mm-hmm. that there are, that, that would yeah. be interesting. I'll, in- I'll explore that. Right. Good job. We've got another person involved in all of this. And, um, you know, I, I just can't, I can't walk away from this conversation without mentioning both Ella and Susan and the tremendous work that they do. Um, and, you know, this is a part-time thing for them, but you look at Susan and, you know, when when you see the different faces on in the video of the different singers, you know, the singers were actually, we learned today, or I did, I'm sure Nathan knew this, you know, they're all, she's coming in and having two or three people at a time because of COVID recording their little pieces. And then mm-hmm. she cuts and paces out into one song. Um, and it's just really the music at Sandy Springs Christian Church is, is phenomenal. Uh, thanks to both Ellen and uh, Ella and Susan. And, um, you know, my dream is for you and David to do a duo one day. <laughs> I think both of you kind of sound like great country singers. And I think, you know, maybe you in the next intro uh, for one of these podcasts would be you and David doing a little duo. Ooh. duo. Uh, oh, oh. Please, please. Can I hear that? Please. That would be fantastic. Oh, no. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have everybody stop it within the first 20 <laughs> seconds. We're like, who are these crazy guys? Uh, um, no, but, but I do, I will tell you this, I, uh, that Susan has reached back out to me again recently. Uh, and I don't know when yet, but I know in her plan is I, I will be singing something again for the church. She she got me to do my first solo since I was like in grade school last uh, last December, right before Christmas, which was great. And I'm glad I did it. Uh, but maybe the next one is a du- duo or duet. Uh, du- it's a duet. I, you know, yeah. I, I use long term a lot. So just kind of ignore me. But uh, if any, if I just anybody- think it'd be fun. If anybody missed the uh, Hanging to the Green service this year, go back. Oh, Listen no. To Casey Solo. It's mm-hmm. it's excellent. It's I, very think, good. I think I'm going to go on the YouTube page and wipe that one out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. No, no. no it was fantastic. It was a, it was I place. was in awe of that. And I always tell David whenever he sings. I mean, I just love everybody that sings. But what I absolutely loved is I was not sitting far away from uh, Brandy. And when she, when he was up there singing and uh, when he came back, she was as excited as all of us and what a great job he had done. And she yeah. just gave him the biggest hug. And I thought that was just priceless that I got to see that. So, yeah. Yeah. well, I think you guys are witnessing my cheeks turning red and <laughs> face and all the different colors and a cheesy smile, but I will, I will make other one other admittance here is that Brandy still and I, to this day, it will just come at a random time that, you know, Joe, we just have to say, it's Christmas. <laughs> the <laughs> angels are singing. Anyways, uh, I won't go any further than that. <laughs> well, and, that, and, and, and I do want to, you know, when you start mentioning names, it's hard because you end up going through this, you know, th- there's so many people who have made possible the last year and all that's happened. We, we are so fortunate to have the staff we do at the church, all of them, mm-hmm. uh, in, in different ways. But Brian Gibson, actually, I mean, you know, there were so many things that some of our staff folks took on that is not anywhere in the realm of their job description this last <laughs> year, right? I mean, some of the things that are in their job description, they couldn't do because of COVID or had to do drastically different. Um and as a result of that, ended up taking on things that we didn't do before that 
all of a sudden we were having to figure out how to do and and just balance the time between all the staff people to do them, one of which was producing worship. And when we started recording worship, I mean, Brian Gibson has really become our um, our video editor slash producer of worship. And anytime we do videos for anything, I mean, now he's the one to receive the videos. He edits them and ends up putting them together in some semblance of, you know, um, a meaningful way, you know. And, uh, you know, he's learned and become really savvy and all that um, and has spent, you know, hours and hours of, of doing that for in different ways, not just for worship, but the different digital things we've done along the way. So um, we are very fortunate to have the staff we do and the folks that we do who, who lead the church and who have just learned all kinds of new skill sets to kind of bring us through this time. So. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll try to start wrapping this up a little bit by saying, I hope everybody recognizes now just by listening to this, if you've made it this far, um, that <laughs> how, how important it is that people are within the life of our congregation. We couldn't do it without everybody who steps up at the right time, at the right place. Um, we, we really uh, think that our future is bright um, here at Sandy Springs um, Christian Church and that, you know, 2021 and beyond, we're, we're just going to continue to grow spiritually. Um, and, and, and I'm excited about it. Uh, I have, I have great hope for it. Um, I, I know we have a great group of people here that are dedicated to it, um, you know, and Quite frankly, I think we've got room for more, you know, and I know there's people that are super busy with their jobs and their lives and things of that nature. And we're not asking for uh, for everybody to drop everything. And and I just want to make sure that people, when they are given, have the time, you know, think about, think about our church as part of your vision of the future. So, um, you know, and, and where I see our church going, you know, in the, in the, broad broadest future that you can look at you know we're going to have a hvac system that works very soon i'm pretty <laughs> certain of it we won't go into the detailed system of that um but but i but but our church is in such solid foundational footing um to just build the most beautiful tabernacle that that can be built um and and i'm very excited to be a part of it i feel like even though we've been around for 50 years i feel like i'm still a little bit on the ground floor of it um and it's super exciting um to be here um and thank you nathan thank you janet for for spending this time of your afternoon for us and you know i'd i'd like to you know make sure you guys have uh said everything you want to say if not Yep. No, I, I go ahead, Janet. I'm sorry. I would like to just make a little advertisement. Perfect. And that is that we have some really exciting things we're working on for our 20, uh, for our, to achieve by 2022. So we've got a lot of work to do from visioning in 2021. We've got pretty much assigned most of the people to lead the different groups, but we've got lots of um, spaces for anyone that is interested in helping in any particular area. And they there's really just a whole lot of them. And if you have any free time that you would love to be a part of one of these teams, please reach out to me. And once you join the Breeze software, you'll be able to get my, all of my contact information when you'll be doing that, as I mentioned earlier, in the next week or two, you'll be hearing about that. But please reach out because we can use help from anybody and everybody. And mm -hmm. uh, we really would love to get more people engaged. So thank you so much. Yeah. And if folks need to, if folks want to ask more questions or whatever, don't hesitate to reach out to myself. I can put you in touch with Janet or Amy in the office can put you in touch with Janet. And um, we, this has to, like I said, from the beginning, in order for kind of this new mission and vision to, to really blossom, it's got to be written on our hearts and not just something in our heads and, and not just something on paper. And so the more they get involved in it, the more that will take shape and, and the more that God will be able to do through, uh, I think, this plan. So Perfect. thank you both. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Janet. It's been Absolutely. an awesome conversation. Enjoy no, it. Th thank you. Thank you, Janet, for, uh, for being our first guest. Um, <laughs> we'll have to, uh, we'll have to come up with some 
parting gift here, uh, Nathan. <laughs> I, I don't know what yet, but I'll, I'll think of something fun. Uh, well, this time with the two of you has been, been my gift. So, you know, just consider very well paid. Well, thank you. Well, if uh, anybody else wants to be well paid in the future with the presence of Nathan and I, please reach out to me, <laughs> Casey Evans, SSCC at gmail.com uh, or Nathan at Nathan at Sandy Springs CC dot org uh, about wanting to be a future guest or a group of guests um, uh, on a future episode. Um, but uh, thank you. And uh, with that, I, I will let uh, Nathan conclude us this week with a, a word of prayer. Yep. Let's pray. Gracious God, we, we thank you for the vision that you've given to Sandy Springs Christian Church, for the vision that you give to your congregations here on earth to respectively go about um, building your kingdom further in your ministry. We thank you for the individuals that have made that possible within the life of our congregation, for all the gifts that we have been given to share with your world, and just pray that you would continue to work through us as we go about sharing your love through inclusivity, service, and spiritual growth. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you, Janet and Nathan, on Sunday. See you soon. Bye.